Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see a lot of people here. You know, we have these sorts of meetings uh, an awful lot of times. No one that, other than John, myself, and some staff show up. So, oh, can you hear me? Okay. Um, this is obviously a very important project. Uh, as John, I think, mentioned, the fact that the, the hospital came down within the last, you know, it's been down for about four, yeah, or, five, four or five months now. That was a major accomplishment. And uh, it really has set the path, or, or, or basically, literally, given us a clean slate on which we can work. And the whole intention this evening, as John mentioned, is to see whatever feedback that we can get, we can give back to our friends from Conway uh, School. Uh, so they continue to work on, uh, they've been doing works, uh, they, they hit the ground running. Uh, we had a very, very good, productive meeting with them a week or so ago. Uh, and this is one of the steps uh, throughout the process where we have these public meetings, and I believe we're going to have one more in a few uh, a few weeks or so. Uh, hopefully, if, uh, if Phil is scaling up to it, Phil and I are going to go out to uh, to your event. I think it's at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. um, and participate in that. I did want to bring the group up to speed with the fact that uh, just uh, just today I received a contract or a proposal for and appraise the street of house so that we can sell that and of course that is part of the uh, you know the overall uh, um, uh, goals in terms of bringing some money back money. To, yep money. money it's all about money to bring some money back to further seed the project so I would anticipate if not tomorrow before the end of the week I'll sign off on that contract he'll go out he'll do the appraisal we'll go through the process of, uh, of selling that particular property and um, you know, we'll go from there. So, uh, Do you want to just I, say what the property is. Huh? Say, can you say what the property is? Yeah, well, the, the property. Wall Street of property. Right. Yeah. The one I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's yeah. the old superintendent, the superintendent of the hospitals, uh, yeah. uh, 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 property. It's, uh, actually with the, with, with Matt's help, we ended up getting a, uh, a septic plan approved, uh, for, is it five or four? I forget. Sure. For six, uh, for six bedrooms, okay. which yeah, which makes the property that much more uh, desirable. Um, we expect a decent return on that. Um, Where's the septic going to be? Uh, in, behind. Behind it. Yes, behind okay. it. Okay. Um, we expect again a decent return on that uh, on that property. Uh, I have to actually check. Uh, to to be honest with you, I have to, I'm going to show my ignorance on this. I don't think that we're going through an auction procedure. I don't think that that's what we do like we do with the tax title properties a couple of months or so ago. I think basically, we, if I'm not mistaken, we put it out for RFP and we take, we take quotes in for the, pro, uh, for the purchase. It's not, a, it's not an auction type of thing. But uh, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, I'll get that appraisal. We'll know what it's worth. We'll go out. We'll sell it. We'll have a bit of money further to, to move further, forward with this stuff. And the other thing that the Board of Selectmen committed to do, uh, actually prior to me actually taking the job, is they made a commitment uh, that the money that we did get from the, uh, the tax title properties that we sold back in, uh, I think it was the end of the year, I think it was December, now that I think about it, we have put that money aside and we're going to put that back into an account that's going to help with this process as well. So we should have a decent amount of money, whatever we decide to do, uh, however we decide to go forward. And basically, I shouldn't say we, I should say you, how the town decides to go forward with this. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to, to our friends from the Conway Group. And I'll be here uh, for a little bit, but I have to actually go. I have to go up to uh, a school committee meeting uh, in probably about half an hour and uh, get their, uh, their buy-in on putting a cell tower up in the woods here on this property, which a lot of people are concerned about the, uh, the lack of cell coverage here. A lot of people would like to see the revenue come in, and I think that that's going to be a wonderful thing for the town as well. So we're doing as much as we can. We're moving forward in this town, and I'm very proud of what we're doing here and the other things we're doing. So thank you very much. Hi everyone, I'm Allison Maurer. Um, this is Elon Bills. We are um, graduate students at the Conway School of Landscape Design in Western Massachusetts. So um, we are out here really excited to engage with you all about this property that we can tell everybody's really passionate about, cares about. There's been so much history, so much work gone into figuring out what can be on this site. Um, and we're uh, thrilled to be here with you all to get a sense of what it is that you're interested in, what it is that you want and love and are um, want to see on this property. So um, 
We are in this moment in time where we want to get feedback from you. I'm going to give you just a sense of our process and give you some things to chew over. We're going to split up into groups, think about um, what might what might fit on this site. I'm sure you have lots of other questions too. This is a, a session we would love to just get you thinking creatively, brainstorm about what is in Hanson already and um, what you would love to see um, happen on this property. Um, so <laughs> we always have trouble with these clickers, bear with me. Um, so you all know what was on this site before. I don't know how many people have been up there since the building was taken down. Um, I know it has a, a long history of research and thought that's gone into what could be here. Um, we are currently at this uh, moment of taking all of that research and thought and the town um, came together and said they want to explore the idea of a, muni of a municipal park here. So, um, you know, surveys in 2012 had some have creative ideas like um, blowing it up for a Hollywood movie, which we found particularly entertaining um, and obviously not reasonable. So um, we are going forward with the park after the demolition of this building. Um, and here we are, the Conway School. So our process is um, uh, ecologically focused. Um, we like to get a lot of community feedback and we do a lot of analysis of what's happening on the site, what's going on there already, what the town needs, um, and make our designs based on all of that information. Uh, and we're working with the final Plymouth County Hospital Reuse Committee and this Park Planning Committee closely to make sure that we are getting information um, from the town that is accurate so we um, know how to move forward. Again, we sort of have this kind of blank slate now that the building's gone. This is the southern portion of the site. Um, pardon if the lights make it a little bit hard to see this here. So we're looking at a, a landscape design for a park, and there are many different elements that we can consider. Um, ideally multi-generational, things for kids, things for adults, um, space for events perhaps, for a farmer's market or uh, music events something that might memorialize the hospital or the, um, and its patients in some way, the history of the site, uh, something historic and educational. The Bonnie House is located there and is being renovated, so we know there's this great asset already on site. Um, we have to consider parking and traffic, how that might impact the neighborhood, um, since that would be shifting significantly. And then thinking about connections to um, nearby trails, nearby parks, um, Wampatuck Pond, things that are already great in this town, um, trying to make this a piece of that story. Um, how do we make this happen? This is um, a, you know, a community effort. We think that um, the community is a big piece of this, as is the ecology, and as are questions about what is really feasible and what is possible. Um, and all of these things together can create, you know, with, with good consideration, uh, hopefully a great park in the center um, there are many elements of community ecology and manageability that we're going to keep in mind as we move forward with design. Um, this includes educational opportunities, collaboration and partnerships that might come out of um, having a park on site, um, wanting there to be more spaces to gather, um, improving ecological function, and then trying to think about ways that maintenance and budget and um, uh, sort of the ongoing ease of how we can keep up the site in a reasonable way for the town can all come together to create a, a park that's truly functional. Um, we think that there's some amazing things on this site already. Um, there are a variety of areas, so there are meadows that are um, a pretty unique and dwindling habitat in the area. We want to value those. There's this large open area where the hospital used to be, which creates this kind of lovely vista um, places for you know larger events, places to gather. Um, the historic buildings, the community gardens, the food pantry are already there and already functioning well for the town, it seems. Um, and then again, proximity to the town center, um, to the pond, and to the Bay Circuit Trail, we think are great assets. Um, the main thing, though, is that you know we know that the community cares so much about this site, and we um, see the community and its passion for the site as one of the major assets. So we're going to ask you to split into groups and think about what could possibly be here. We're going to give you some ideas. Some of these may seem a little outlandish, um, but we want you to get thinking creatively. Um, we want to think about what you love in a park, what is in Hanson, what you have already, what you need, um, and hopefully we can give you a couple ideas that are going to um, uh, get you thinking.
Um, ideally, we want this space to be multi-generational. Um, it would be, at least this proposal, what we're going to propose to the town, and the town will decide how to move forward from there, is going to be have space for adults, space for kids. Um, we're looking primarily at passive recreation, which are forms of recreation that require these facilities, um, use supplies like trails, hiking, space for picnicking, um, but also some space for uh, play structures and fun for kids. Um, and we want you to think expansively about play. How would you want to play on this property? Um, you can all kind of imagine a traditional play structure. Um, that might be perfect for this town. Are there other types of things that might be perfect for this town too, or perfect for this site? Um, we have a long site, there's lots of area. Are there places where um, sort of adventure play or wandering or interacting with nature might be great forms of um, getting kids engaged with that land as well? We want to think about sort of day to evening activities, um, things that may not be happening in town that might get people coming together and engaging in a communal space, like outdoor movies. We want to think about um, seasonality. What do we want to do in the summertime versus how can we use this space in the winter? Are there ways that we can and program this land um, to provide outdoor opportunities for the town and its residents even in colder seasons? Um, outdoor recreation might look like a lovely hiking trail. It might look like a great place to gather, um, a place to lounge perhaps. This is um, an awesome hammocks installation on Governor's Island, which looks so fun and obviously people are drawn to. Um, so creating, creating destinations that people think look fun and want to go to and want to spend time in um, bringing people together in these locations. There's also the potential for really increasing the ecological value of this site. Obviously, the pictures we showed you before are, you know, post-demolition. Um, and there's a lot we can do with that, um, with some work. And we think that, that there can be, you know, increased habitat for pollinators, for animals, and also the aesthetic beauty of bringing in, you know, flowering plants, um, making people explore through different types of ecological spaces, through woods, through a meadow, through a garden, or um, you know, a bunch of flowers, wildflowers out in the field. Um, we also want to encourage you to think big. Um, there are many things that we know that you need, and we want to hear those things. Also, think about you know what could an area look like that you might um, host a, a music event. It could look like a bandstand. It could look like an amphitheater theater created out of trees. Um, there are a lot of different beautiful ecological assets on this site, and we want you to think about what is feasible here? What ways do you want to engage with it? If you want to hear music, what ways could we hear music on that site? Maybe it's not this um, wild up in the trees amphitheater, <laughs> though it would be awesome if it was, um, but just think broadly and creatively about what those things could be. Um, this is also kind of a wild example of uh, a destination in a park, something that draws you in, something that's interactive, something you can play with, um, and is also stacking different functions. Um, kids might find it exciting. It's also a shade structure. It can bring people together. You get different ages engaging in that space all at the same time. Um, you could put solar panels on the roof. Um, there are many different ways that we could, you know, take one structure and make it do multiple different things, bring different people together in that one space. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Elon. Can I say something for a minute? The uh, last week at the meeting, Mr. Kemet is here, I believe. He uh, brought in a... Uh, where are you here, John? He's right here, John. I can't see you. I'm right here. I don't know if you want to speak to something too, because it's, he was he brought in a, a good thing about making a pavilion up here someplace in the location, right. and uh, he gave us some, actually prices and so forth that the townspeople should know about. So before the end of the meeting, maybe John can talk something about that. All right? Yeah, we've got uh, 30 minutes to discuss. So right now, um, what I want to encourage people to do is really think about. Um, how they define play, um, how you interact with the space, um, and really think about the chasms in Hanson. What's missing from this town that we could possibly incorporate um, into a design moving forward? Um, think broadly. Don't think just about um, an object or a structure. Think about how that functions. Um, what does it do? 
is just is a shade structure something to gather around um, but really just uh, expand um, what we uh, typically think about a, a space or an object and um, hopefully this will get people um, engaging with one another I encourage um, uh, if people want to move around and uh, meet uh, folks that they're not in uh, have yet to meet um, and we can collaborate and um, put some designs on paper and kind of have a uh, design activity um, and what I would also encourage people to take these maps that are on the table um, and write down the things that actually exist in Hanson and the things that um, you would like in Hanson so really think about um, more of an emotional experience of a park and what that does and how we could include that in a, in a design um, so if we could just um, hopefully break up into teams of approximately six um, and then following that um, we'll have about 30 minutes and then I would like for uh, a few groups to come up and present their ideas um, and then we can have uh, feedback. If you can um, each in your group pick one person who's going to be the presenter um, who, can, who will sort of be in charge of keeping track of people's thoughts and then we'll come up and, and give us all a sense and we can have a discussion. Yeah. That. And we'll be walking around the room if you have any questions please ask. <laughs>
design details can help us to inform what is really within the scope of the challenge. Small golf course. Small golf course. Yeah. Small golf course. Yeah. <laughs> Community building, library. Yeah. Oh, you guys are really interested. Um, if you also want to think about like what other open space and recreation amenities are going to be like, what's not, what's not, how are you going to keep dogs out in this area? Are you going to keep dogs in this area? Well, that's something we, it has come up as an idea, um, you know, that people are, there is some interest in the dog park. Um, one of the problems you're going to have is that one acts are very seldom. nature trails. Uh, we would like the idea of uh, identifying trees, identifying uh, historical attributes of the site, um, you know, the, the hospital that was there, uh, placards that explain, uh, you know, what was on the site before and, and uh, you know, its history. Uh, low impact. David here wanted an amphitheater right behind his house. <laughs> so, uh, I like yeah. music. <laughs> we haven't discussed too much about uh, what the amphitheater would look like, but I think uh, uh, it would be nice to have a, a place where people could go for activities in the evening, that kind of thing. So, uh, uh, again, low impact. I'm not sure what all oh, these things are, but community involvement with uh, you know youth group, youth and in, uh, in uh, youth groups. Uh, financially feasible, that's the big one. Um, there's some items in here, benches, water, like water uh, bubblers for, for, for kids to uh, and adults to drink from. Bathroom, thinking maybe portable bathrooms, that kind of thing uh, for a park. Um, a dog park would be nice, a fenced in area where people could bring their pets to run around and uh, you know, where they wouldn't bother other people that didn't want to be in that area. But um, We've visited a number of dog parks and really a social uh, social areas where you know people get together and talk about uh, different things while their pets run around and visit with each other. So, uh, bike trails would be nice, just paths. They don't have to be paved. Be nice if they were, but uh, um, those would uh, those would fit certainly. And hiking trails on the property. It's a large area, 50, 52 acres, right? So uh, plenty of room for those kinds of activities, and again, they're, they're fairly low maintenance and not that costly to uh, to implement. So, what else do we have here? Encourage picnic wildlife. Area. Picnic area. Picnic area. Picnic area would be nice. Some of those um, freestanding barbecues, benches, some tables. Fire. That, that kind of thing, you know, uh, in, a, in a in a clearing, a large I clearing, really perhaps. Right. <laughs> Oh, gas, you want to pipe in gas up there? That'd be great. Who's going to pay for that? That could go behind your house, too. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, this is good. 
So Alan, oh, okay. Alan, if I'm getting this straight, you kind of want to uh, ensure that we respect the historical integrity of the site. Right. It's a big component right. of that. Does anybody have any questions for Alan? Can you say what split rock is? Oh, the yeah, split rock. Get, I love that, that part on the list. But the split rock is a, a large boulder that has a, has a split in it. Have I you seen it? Yeah. 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 Except like Big Rock Lane. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and that's how Big Rock Lane yeah. got its name. Yeah. It's just a giant split rock. Yeah. It's probably no. from here all the way over to there, maybe. Yeah. Split rock. Smaller? Split oh, rock. much smaller. Oh, Come on. <laughs> It is. It's on private property? It's on the private property. I would argue. Yeah. It's about the same wall. Really? I don't know. We'll have to take that over by eminent domain. Big Rock Lane. National Historic Treasure. How many people are there? Just with it. Just with it. Just with it. Yeah, I'm thinking, let's just put a vote. I'm thinking that it's <laughs> that's okay to back. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, we'll we'll just let's see what else. Uh, yeah. I think we have. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So so we'll leave it natural. I know. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's always good to come up early, so <laughs> so I don't steal anybody else's ideas. But Catherine and I have got together, and um, we also would like some walking slash bike. Path, but we also thought in the winter that could be used for cross country skiing yes. and snowshoeing. Yeah. I mean, it would be a nice passive, you know, recreation. And I think, yes, it would make it work all year. We also like the fenced dog park, um, covered picnic benches, so that if you're out there and it's you're having a picnic, if it's rainy or just my, for myself, not wanting to be in the sun, it's really good if they they were covered, and they should they should be at least some benches located near the children's play area. We would like to see a children's play area, and if people could go out there and spend some time, we also um, talked about bathroom facilities. Now they were talking about portable, but right behind the. Um, food pantry, there would be access to water there, so perhaps that might be something to consider to have, you know, a permit. Right. Yeah, it's going to be There's got to be a way to put yeah, I'm sure there is. I think there should some be permanent restrooms yeah. up there. Right. 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 Community right. gardens, um, I think there's, even though many people in town have large lots of land, not everybody has a yard that they want to do a vegetable garden in. It's also something that's recreational and meet other people like at the dog park you can go up to your garden and so I think behind the food pantry they already have some but that, but that could be uh, expanded. Um, we like the idea of the amphitheater um, behind David's house. <laughs> we like the idea of the amphitheater, not behind David's house. Um, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also thought the town of Hanson doesn't have an awful lot of um, maybe a, a memorial for soldiers or something something like that could be up there um, maybe at the entrance there's a beautiful one just went in in Hanover on 139 across from there town hall if anybody wants to take a ride by that it's really nice and it's not elaborate I mean it's not overwhelming but I thought it was really nicely done might be something for that area and the last thing is Catherine came up with uh, eventually it doesn't show on this but eventually this does come down to walk the tuck pond and if we had um, people could come in from the town hall on kayaks or um, you know, uh, canoes to land up there and probably some picnic benches down there. And she also suggested that perhaps someone could, might want to teach people how to use canoes and kayaks. Mm -hmm. So that just might be an idea. <laughs> that was that. Well, Sorry, I have a question. Why did you say what <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have a question just regarding um, uh, what was just discussed, but uh, as far as like uh, seasonal use and cross-country skiing, I just have a show of hands. Um, I don't know how many people cross-country ski, but just a show of hands. And you know, is that no, sure. Yeah. No, sure. Yeah, any sort of, okay, thank you. That's what I want. 
preface versus this group is from the Hanson Historical Society. So please don't quote, misquote a date or a location. <laughs> <laughs> and the town historian. So. so we put everything that's currently here. We think there should be. This is the superintendent's area. That building is going to be sold privately. That will raise money. This is the Bonnie House. We hope eventually in the future to have the Historical Society buildings up there and have a little historic area. So you have to have enough room for all of that going. Then you have the office staff and the food pantry over here. You have parking and the gardens. And these purple lines here are all the current roads going in. This is the water tower. If they're looking for a second water tower, it should be in that same area. So it would be something like that. Then over here you have the steep slopes. We were talking about, you can't do anything with that. How about putting solar fields or solar panels there or something along that line um, on that. Then they sh we were talking also, it should be supervised. So this is a proposed road. This is a permanent road coming in here, permanent road here, and permanent road here so that the police can come through and parole it every time they're on their rounds or something, just to make sure, because otherwise you're going to have, find all kinds of stuff there that you don't want to have happening. Then we said the open fields would be for sports, and then this would be a park area, and this building is no longer there, so it should be out of your picture. But we were just talking about it should be for sports, and we had no idea what kind of sport you want, do you want to make it for an activity that you pay for and raise funds for the town? Or do you want to have it just like all the other sports that we have in town, you pay for that sport and then they manage the fields and stuff. So, any other thing? Any questions? So we want to make sure that we bring business back to Hanson, so we're going to bring in a megaphone plant and put it right next to where Dave Sobel lives <laughs> to make sure that he's taken care of. It's, it's just great revenue service. So please. Yeah. Um, one of the things is a lot of those might bring in field trips to the area too, which we bring to the kids. Uh, Girl Scouts, hey, Boy Scouts. Big up. Oh. Field trips for the schools. Um, we talked about maybe doing like a labyrinth down the Cape. There's like little mazes, and it's oh, that's really cool. easy to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but it'll, you know, for the kids, I do think it's important, like Forge Pond, to have those trails by the paved areas would be nice for biking and moms walking the babies with a stroller. Um, well, I think it'd be nice to try to keep the, the natural environment as close to being as natural as you possibly can. Yes. One of the things we want to create different ecologies throughout the area, so schools can have field trips there, look at different types of uh, plants, different types of animals, different types of insects that might congregate right there. Keep move away from having things kind of be square and have it ex explorable, and just have different rock walls, and streams built into it. Everything is different. Uh, you know, big bridges going over certain things, and just lots of things to explore. On top of that. We talked about the history of the hospital is so interesting too, just kind of keeping maybe some plaques that people can stop and read um, just along the way as they're exploring. And I know this is far fetched. We did like the hammock idea or maybe a zip line, and I'm sure those won't in there. But you know, maybe mention that we do love the whole area of having bands at night and maybe like bring in a couple food trucks if we're playing movies. Things like that, just a, a farmer's market, just to generate funds, whether you have a flea market. If we want to keep true to the history, uh, maybe get some ghost tours at night, I don't know if we want to go there. But <laughs> <laughs> that would be good for Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of people still think the grounds are haunted, so that could maybe generate a little revenue. But, so. But you know, know. Even different little art installations throughout the entire trail so that everything kind of, every time you explore, it, it, there's a little placard that pays homage to some aspect of the, of the town or the area, uh, something along those lines. Um, we also had the, like the, the walk-in, sit-down, outdoor movie theater mm -hmm. to do stuff like that. I know you said the labyrinth, but also the, uh, the maze, like a hedge maze, maze or something along those lines. It's better to be hard to kind of maintain, but 
good idea. I thought Joe Cole's the big, big yeah. splash pad, you'd say. Yeah. Um, different structures that also have solar panels on top. And then we would install different uh, light poles that in certain areas would allow for not people to enjoy during the day, but also at night, uh, but not so many that it causes light pollution for people that want to actually enjoy the stars and just be out there by themselves. So to create those areas. Also larger areas to bring carnivals in, things along those lines if you want big events. You also, uh, I mean, there's, there's plenty of opportunities. Yeah, there. Along the lines of the pavilion, I know at Ames Knoll is a large green area where people can have family reunions, things like that. I don't know if they charge for the area, but that might be another way to bring in revenue. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're told we're in front of Dave's house. <laughs> and then also, she was saying there's a fireplace that they're able to save, and it's a really pretty structure, and maybe, you know, have some kind of picnic benches around there, just kind of have that as a central. Oh, you had a good idea about uh, having the built-in grills, things along those lines, so that you know people can go up there. It's very similar to your idea you guys had. Uh, cover as much cover as we can for the hot days and whatnot. Um, frisbee golf. Yep, frisbee. Yep. And maybe oh, like a frisbee golf course around the um, around the place. And then everything else you guys had covered a lot of the other stuff that we had. So um, I think yeah, that's uh, that yeah, that's about it. <laughs> So, I, I mean, I think we were very cynical. I mean, the group of us. So probably the applauders would say, yeah. I mean, we're the maintenance is going to be a huge issue. We will never be handover. We have no commercial base. We are never going to get that kind of money in there. So it is simply, I mean, I was the one who said, I just love Central Park in New York. It's like you want a huge green as much as you can do that is just a green. Yeah. Throw a couple, or like some kind of paved path or something around it, like at Forge Pond if you want the perimeter. Throw a couple picnic tables in that are as close and indestructible as you can. Cranberry Cove, we have destroyed so many picnic tables there over the years. What we? I mean, Han <laughs> Hanson or someone has, so it's like just have a couple, yeah. keep it so maintenance free. Yeah. You need a big parking area. I mean, we sketched it, Alan did it more precisely, but it's like, you just come in around behind the food pantry or whatever, big parking space right there so you can park, get under the green, maybe down at the end where it's problematical with the two foot contour intervals, you can say, yeah, put a little lamp of theater there for something in the summertime or whatever. And Sturbridge Village, of course, is what Patty said. I mean, Sturbridge is right in the Bonnie House, you have now four buildings that at some point can be, you know, in summer, open to the public, I'm yes. sure, and now it's yeah. like the Stetson House in Hanover. And that's what you got. And, I mean, this doesn't go up to the meadows, which I would hate to see the meadows even touched. It would be yeah. night, they will never, I don't even think they'll ever be maintained because we don't have enough people on the highway department to maintain them. So, I mean, it's as simple as that. We, I mean, we love the Greenway. I will take the boys to the to Boston any time. Well, we did say it'd be awfully nice if someone would sponsor a fountain that the kids could just play in or whatever. But it's like that even yeah. that's not really going to happen because the cost of that is just unless we can figure out how to steal it off the water tower. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like really, we're just saying keep it keep it so simple that there's nothing but a green with parking, really and we'll all play all the frisbee on it. There That's is right. a 400 foot that diesel well up there. Well, then, there we go. Well, we could get, well, we we get the splash pit in. in. We got the splash pit in. Yeah. We, had, we would definitely go for that. But anything, you can't, we maintain nothing in Hanson Well. We maintain nothing in Hanson Well. So don't put in something that. My yard is. Thank you. We don't maintain your yard. All right. Hello, Matthew Dyer. Uh, for our group, just as a disclaimer, this was to imagine what we could put up there, not the logistics of anything. So don't uh, shoot the messenger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's one less. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we had a lot of the uh, same. Uh, we had a lot of the same ideas: trails for uh, multi-use, whether it's snowshoeing. Uh, cr cross country skiing, mountain bikes, road bikes, um, interpretive trails, um, backcountry trails, you name it. Uh, we also like the idea of pavilions, a different um, cover for different picnic areas, uh, but we kind of uh, focused up uh, where the current buildings are for like the beekeepers and the food pantry. We talked about maybe putting 
Um, a nice amphitheater with a pavilion next to it so you can use it both rain or shine. We can have different viewings of movies as well as uh, plays and other uh, events up there as well. Uh, we also talked about um, a playground uh, that is ADA, but also multi-generational. Um, different, uh, and this kind of works into those trail systems as well as having an exercise trail. So as you walk along the road, you can do your pull-ups. And then you can walk up to the next station, you can catch your breath, you can do your push-ups, or whatever uh, it may be. So um, another idea that we talked about was maybe putting a beer garden up there. And every month you could switch out the brewery. Oh, and <laughs> you know we, we already discussed having Bud Light on on tap uh, or select. Uh, and and uh, we also talked about the dog park, just like everyone else. Um, and we also talked about maybe doing some sort of timber framing to kind of keep costs low and uh, use our resources locally for. Uh, different uh, areas, and I think that you want to uh, touch upon that. Yeah, um, so I've done a lot of projects with the Timber Farmers Guild, they're a professional organization, and they will basically come camp out for a week or two, and they will build enormous structures at very low cost. Basically, we would be covering materials, their food and lodging, which could be Camp Kiwani, you know, it could be local groups putting together dinners, they're really not picky, they just love building stuff. Any, any, a lot. But basically what they do is they come from all over the country, sometimes all over the world, and it's a training opportunity for them, it's business connections for them, and these are, for the most part, you know, there'll be a core group of probably about 20 professional timber framers who've been doing this for years, decades, possibly. Um, and then it'll be a great opportunity. They usually sell workshops and then give the money back to the organization that sponsors it. Um, so they'll be training people to be timber framers there at the same time. It's something I've done many times. It was awesome for the community. It was awesome to be a part of. And uh, I think it could be a great way for us to get something more substantial on this site without putting the time in the future. So, yeah, that's good. <laughs> And then the last two ideas was maybe an indoor field, uh, like some sort of dome, uh, because they're in high demand right now, and it, it could possibly lead to more revenue. Um, and then the last thing that we talked about quickly was maybe putting a viewing tower on the new water tower. <laughs> <laughs> so that you can zip line down. That's <laughs> it. Um, so we basically had a lot of what everybody else already said. Um, just to add to that, one of the things we thought of was bat houses. So if we're thinking about an outdoor pavilion, that's a, um, and maybe working with Mass Audubon with that. Um, and then we said pickleball courts and bocce courts, horseshoes, um, any big boulders. I, I didn't know there was a split rock up there, but maybe if there's other Bull rocks. What is it? Get some bull rocks in there. <laughs> some bull rocks, not half. Um, and then uh, the labyrinth. We talked about that as well. I think um, one of the important things, if we get, if we decide to put trails in, which it sounds like everybody's sort of on the same page with that, definitely um, doggy bag areas where people <laughs> can clean up after their coochies. Yeah. Um, I think that's important. And then um, trail maps, markers, and then also. Um, historical markers to where the hospital was. I'm wondering, you know, we've talked about sort of art installations and stuff, maybe doing something around where the foundation of the hospital actually was and sort of outlining that with some flowers or something a little bit more concrete, rock, something like that. Ghostly. Grave markers. The base of the trail is open that property. Yeah, somebody said it kind of went along with the green. We sort of kept everything in the white area because we weren't really too sure where it would be going. Um, but maybe at one of the higher peaks, having a viewing area. Also, um, we like the idea of having adding some um, fields to have some more centralized spots for fields in town. Everything seems right now sort of here, there, and everywhere. So having a more communal feeling for our um, our little ones who are doing sports. Splash pad, uh, covered pavilion, the bandstand, and trash barrels. Trash 
trash bags everywhere. Yeah. And recycling. <laughs> 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 Are there any more questions for us? So we're going to have a follow-up community meeting. Um, we're going to take all of this, we're going to start to do some designing, come up with some concepts for um, a couple ideas for what might end up being what we propose to the town. Um, and we're going to present those ideas to the community again. We would love it if you all could come. You could tell other people, tell them to come. I think it'll be really interesting. Um, and it's a really great opportunity for us to show you something concrete, get your feedback on that, and then uh, be able to refine it um, further. Um, that is going to be the last week of May. We don't have the exact time and location set yet. So if you, uh, you need to keep your eyes peeled um, on Facebook, or if you um, Put your email down on that piece of paper up front. Um, we can send an email out to all of you once we come up to all of those details. Or you can select it, <coughs> send it to the selectman's office. We'll definitely do that as well. Yeah.